Back for tech. My last video had a clickbait title and was a little bit silly. This video and thumbnail is not clickbait and it is 100% serious. This is an actual game changer that we're talking about here and by the end of this video, guaranteed, you're going to agree with me. Why is the S52X better than these other cameras? Depending on who you ask, you will get different answers. If you're a video shooter, you're going to be excited about internal ProRes recording or external Blackmagic RAW recording or proper heat management and unlimited recording times, etc, etc. For me though, a time-lapse photographer, it's all about this one little feature called USB SSD recording. By mounting the correct solid state drive or SSD and enabling this menu option, you can record straight to the SSD instead of on a memory card. When this was announced alongside the camera, I was extremely excited, but I had two big questions. First of all, would this feature work for photo capture or is it only for the video shooting? Because that's what they only talked about, about bitrates and recording ProRes and external stuff on this solid state drive. I did not know whether photos would be written to the SSD as well. And if they were going to be written, how will the folder structure work? Luckily, once I got my hands on this camera, thanks to Lumix UK, I was able to quickly verify this. All you got to do is go into the menu system, enable this option, format the drive using the camera, and then you can start recording both photos as well as videos, of course, onto this solid state drive. Once that's enabled, you can shoot hectically long time lapses onto this drive because of the storage capacity. More about that later. Second important question, can I add other folders and project files such as Lightroom catalogs or After Effects projects? project files onto this SSD as well. The point here being is that I can shoot onto the drive, then plug it into my laptop and start editing from that drive in the Lightroom catalog that is on that. Otherwise, you're going to have another bottleneck of transferring stuff or working with multiple drives at the same time. You want to decrease the amount of bottlenecks and you want to increase the amount of efficiency, which is why I'm always so passionate about finding the best workflow. On a really big, actually one of the biggest shoots I've ever done, three night shoot earlier this year, I went to bed at 3 a.m. the first night, then 4 a.m. and then 5 a.m. And this was all due to the enormous amount of data that we shot, about four and a half terabytes with three cameras over multiple nights of shooting. The biggest wait for me, the most frustrating thing was literally just sitting around and waiting until everything was offloaded. This was after I had invested a fair amount of money in the fastest solid state drives, the fastest cards and the fastest reader. I still had to wait hours for it to finish transferring all the content and then in the middle of the night or after the middle of the night, I still had to color grade and export and render all these time lapses, which led sadly to two straight months of my left eyelid twitching. I thought I had a night twitch for the rest of my life, but luckily I eventually caught up on sleep and that was no longer the issue. That wouldn't have been an issue if I had the USB-C SSD recording on that shoot. There's one more great benefit, which may be obvious, maybe not so obvious to you, but I want to talk about a little promo here. I don't have a lot of sponsors on this channel, so I'm sponsoring the channel, or maybe you are, because I want to talk about my time-lapse courses briefly. If you are a photographer or a videographer who wants to add time-lapse or hyperlapse production to your tool belt, to your skill set, so that you can find new or more clients and charge more money for more deliverables, highly recommend checking out my time-lapse courses. They start at 97 USD for time-lapse for beginners. There's a hyperlapse specific course, and these two courses come from the ultimate time-lapse course, which is a little bit more expensive, but it is absolutely worth it, according to everyone who has bought them and has learned so many new things from planning, shooting, post-processing, special editing techniques, how to license content, how to make money, etc. It's all in there. The links are down below. Very much appreciate you checking that out. Now, I want to go back to that other point I was talking about, which is capacity. Yes, currently we're limited to two terabyte SSDs that we can plug into the camera. But if you want to get that capacity with an SD card, you're going to have to spend a lot more money to get the same speeds, write speeds, read speeds, etc. So capacity here is great. Now with capacity comes long shooting times. You will die. <laughs> you won't die. I'm going to leave this in. Your battery will die well before your SSD is filled up. Normally on long shoots, I would plug in a power bank or a wall plug using the USB-C port. However, we're now obviously using that port. So the solution here is a dummy battery that is USB powered, which I've linked down below as well. I'm actually using that right now on the GH6 to film. It is plugged into my high power USB hub and I never have to worry about powering up this camera or changing batteries mid shoot. So 
that is that very exciting feature to have by the way speaking of the gh6 this camera had usb ssd recording first but i'm very happy to have it now on an s5 series camera what are your thoughts do you want to see me make more videos about the s5 2x i've got a time lapse compilation coming soon i'm uh, editing 15,000 photos currently and it's taken a while but they're just beautiful they're great clouds great cloud action all shot from the cloud palace here that's all i've got for you today any questions let me know Check out my ultimate time-lapse course and other courses, and may the clouds forever be in your favor. Bye-bye.